Well, hello everyone, and welcome to episode 9 on September the 29th, 2013 of Final Boss. We're going to be talking a little bit tonight with some great guests from the NA scene. We're going to talk to two guests from Midwinter, Spazo and Ryeth, about Tier 16 and Siege of Ogremar and all that good stuff, and a little bit about uh, class changes. Just a little bit. There's too much to talk about to uh, really get into class stuff in this episode because of how the heroic raiding scene is going right now. But I uh, hope you guys join us in a tag along. We're definitely happy you all are here. So, like I said, joining us tonight, or I guess I'll go do this first. Where's the other button? It's not working. Anna, hello. How are you doing tonight? Doing well. Doing well. Even though chat's calling me mean over here. What are you? Who are what? you guys? <laughs> how is how is Anna mean? What? The, what the I heck? I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to come. I'm gonna have to think up the meanest comments I possibly can find to say what? to these guys tonight, just to live up to that. How? Jeez. All these people in chat teasing me. I'm doing well tonight. Just though. ban them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I do have the power. I do have the power. Y'all better watch out. Just finishing his bagel. How's that? How's that bagel, Spazzo? You good over there? You all right? Yeah, I'm all good. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show tonight, though. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I hit that other button. Yeah. All right, we're doing good. And also from Midwinter, Ryeth, Enhanced Shaman Brother. How are you doing? Not bad. Pretty good today. Oh, you're in an earthquake zone. What's going on with your camera right now? What's going on? Your I don't know, man. <laughs> What was maybe my leg shaking? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Going crazy over there. Earthquake at the beginning of the show here. That would not be good. That would be crazy something else. All right. I'm going back around the table here. Getting all these things out of the way. Wait, where's the other one? It's terrible. So many buttons. So many things to do. All right. I'm ready for a show. Are you guys ready for a show? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. No, get, get, stop. Play VLC. Stop. Stop. Step it. All right, good. VLC, get out of here. Okay. Whoa, why is there a window over here now? Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, well, I have, you have no idea how many, I have so many windows open right now. Like if one moves and I'm just like, <gasps> oh, first world problems. First world problems. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anna, what have you been up to lately? How's the, how's the Siege of Ogremar going for you? Oh, it's going pretty well. You know, we uh, started the week 2 of 14 H and ended the last 8 hours uh, 8 of 14 Heroic, so we had a pretty good week, uh, to put it mildly. Um, it was it was pretty good, although at some point I, I stopped getting excited about all those new bosses falling over, and then I was just like, is this really is this really it? But, you know, 8, eight of 14 H, so uh, now the fun begins, or so I'm told, and it, it's been pretty great so far. Um, yeah, that's actually, that's actually pretty similar. I actually did the same thing. We did the the, the run of the mill. We were behind about two hours each night, but we're also 8 of 14 currently. So I think mm -hmm. you guys are nipping at our heels, though. You got Nazgrim right after us, I think. Yeah, right? I think yeah. so. But we'll see. That's, what, that's when the fun begins now. Malkarok onward is the real instance. Yeah, I'm pretty excited because we're, um, we're only, we have a strict three-day raid week, so we still yeah. have a whole third of the raid week left to sort of put some time onto Malkarok and see where we can get with that and then uh, finish everything off on Sunday or tonight. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, tonight, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just been a great week. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, we still have tomorrow, so we'll see how Malkaroth goes. But what about you guys? Ryeth, what's been up with you? Oh, so really busy week. Um, well, busy <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. Uh, this we uh, So we're 12 of 14 heroic right now. Uh, when we killed Siegecrafter, that was uh, West 3rd, US 2nd. But uh, I think I heard last night that Exorcist killed Paragon, so... We're back to West Forth, and we're we're hoping to wrap wrap up that spot tonight so that we can uh, go into Garage Strong and uh, maybe you know come out a bit higher on Garage. We'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, I had I had noted uh, just in in like you know passing that I think that that Midwinter is kind of like the new dark horse of NA because you have you obviously have like the the method and the and the Blood Legion right, and then X Forces is a totally different ball game because they're not really part of the NA scene right, and they don't really you know. But uh, I definitely think that. Out of like nowhere over the past couple of tiers, Midwinter has gotten better and better and better, right? So, and when we talked about that, then we think only Exorcist got that kill so fast is because of videos and, and information coming out. Whereas you guys, and especially Blood Legion and Method, went in so dark, you know? So, they did all the work, and Exorcist just picked them up, like, oh, this is what they did. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Well, I still remember that comment that was made on uh, Exorcist's Le Shen video. I think it was by Roger Brown, something like it's like the drunken YOLO strat or something like that. So, what? I mean, like the, <laughs> they definitely have a lot of talent in there, but uh, yeah, like their their strats are sometimes very brute force, but you know they still work. So, what are you gonna say? Yeah, I well, it until it dies. Well, yep. yeah, that's I, I always kind of correlate that to I always called that was the uh, Nihilum uh, method. Whereas they weren't necessarily like one of the best like skilled guilds, but they would just literally brick face that thing and just pull it and pull it and pull it and pull it until it died. So, but that was a while ago now. Rip. But what about you, Spazzo? <laughs> how's how's writing for you going? And uh, anything else? Same thing, basically. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not much else to say? Just mashing our face against some mantids. So. Yeah, you guys just. You guys just started it, though? Uh, when was your first raid on Paragons? Uh, Wednesday night, right? Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Hmm. So we've been basically pulling that sucker for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Pretty disappointed we didn't kill last night, but I think we'll kill tonight, so. Hmm. Yeah, Sloot. Yeah, Sloot's right. Your mic <laughs> went down. And turn your mic back up. Something happened. You are very quiet. I have so, faith. I'll be yeah, for you guys tonight. I believe. Mm-hmm. So outside of, I guess, um, the raiding scene, what else have you guys been doing outside at the, with the small amount of time that you guys have actually had outside of raids? There's life outside of raids? This what is nice yeah. to me. Yeah, for, <laughs> for the top no couple? No time. No, no time? time? Yeah. Working, working, sleeping in a corner, so. <laughs> yeah, my, my day is pretty much, pretty much raid, sleep wake up work and then maybe i'll have time for like a half hour nap before raid again so you know it's it's yeah. pretty intense right now how many are we pulling like the i know we we met about it earlier about how um how many hours other guilds are sleeping how many hours are you guys actually getting in um a night to sleep yeah <laughs> hmm. ah. i probably i on a good night probably four maybe yeah on a good night yeah that's like a good night <laughs> I think That's the like, lowest we've, I, I think good. the lowest we've probably gone is like two when we did uh, siege crafter. Oh, we killed siege crafter uh, progression. Like an hour. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. But yeah, anywhere from like, say like four to five is pretty normal right now. Oof. Jeez. Yeah, but sleep, sleep is for the week, so. Oh, <laughs> is it? Like your progression is done. You can't win if you're asleep. Yeah. So. Can't kill bosses in your sleep, at least no. not yet. So. That's, that is definitely true. But I guess we'll jump right into it then. You can't sleep when you're raiding. So then, um, or can you? Can, or can you? Are you? Have, <laughs> do you have people like like grabbing naps on the list or something like that? <laughs> oh yeah. Depends on how much time you spend dead. Um. So. Between wipes. I guess with, with the with the the way that raiding has changed, definitely going into how the raiding scene's gotten a little smaller. So how has it really changed for Midwinter? I know I talked about it just before the um, intros and stuff on how you guys like the Dark Horse, but. Um, I don't know. Spazza, what do you think? How has the rating scene changed for you coming from um, before Midwinter and now joining them for you? How does it feel? Because you haven't been there as long as, say, Ryath, and we'll go with him next. Well, to be honest, in Exodus, I kind of rode the bench because, you know, Rets were kind of crap. So mm. Yeah, but, sad but true. But um, in terms of, like, uh, big changes, not much. I mean... I mean, the environment is like 10 times better, though, so okay. I enjoy it a lot more. And their turnover is really small. So I think from Exodus, they only picked up me and Samtic, and they picked up uh, Siori from Supermassive. So they lost two people and gained three. So oh. it's pretty good. Pretty nice. good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess once you, I guess the, the time commitment and, and, and like, and, and overall just, just wow commitment at that level has to be so high that. Uh, I guess burnout can be a thing, but I guess you really have to, you know, it's good to have low turnover for that in that regard, that you have to really have people that are really committed to the that push. So, And someone with a little more midwinter experience, Ryeth, how, is, how has midwinter, like, evolved over the past couple of um, tiers? Yeah, well, so, I mean, I guess around the uh, end of Dragon Soul, like, we were a five-night-a-week type of guild, but uh, now have moved on to obviously something where we're raiding a lot more. But it's been sort of like a very organic thing. It hasn't been like, you know, you shall raid 14 hours or get out yeah. type of thing. It's been like, a, hey, guys, how much do you want to raid? Uh, this this tier was like, hey, do you guys want to try something on the first Tuesday where we just go as hard as possible, like get on there as soon as the servers come up and just go until we collapse. And, you know, the reception <laughs> yeah. within the guild was 
really positive to that. So, I mean, I think with Midwinter, it's it's really about like keeping the guild involved uh, involved in that stuff, and I think that really helps with turnover too, because it feels like you at least have some sort of say, or at least can get your opinion out there in terms of how the guild's evolving, and sort of get it in the direction you want it to. So, even if, even if the officers don't go with exactly like what you want, you at least know that your opinion was sort of taken into consideration. So, I think that helps a lot with the turnover. See, now you guys have both kind of mentioned it, how the environment at Midwinter is, is really good. Um, what do you think separates it from some of the guilds that y'all compete with? Mm, this is just the way they like approach like issues in the guild. Um, I mean, other guilds, have, I've been in guilds who just scream at each other, and I've been in this guild where they just take it more of like a constructive approach. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes it's a little, you know, a little more baby-baby than other guilds, but it gets the job done, so... I have hmm. no complaints. Cool. Whatever works, works. So a little, a little more of the carrot and not as much of the rod, if you will. <laughs> mm -hmm. If yeah, that, no if rod. no rod, no rod. Oh, okay. It's been good. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, th I think we've all kind of experienced the thing where you know uh, someone starts yelling at someone, and then all of a sudden the rage just starts de degenerating, and it's just not going well anymore. And it was going better even like while that person was making the mistakes they're making. Like it just completely devolves into nothing good. So um, I think that like when we when people make mistakes, they're sort of they are addressed sometimes, but maybe more privately, um, and just sort of keep like the raid spirits up and keep you know people engaged and not like getting upset and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I guess that kind of actually rings a lot true to just outside of World of Warcraft. For me, like, um, and that's how, like, League of Legends teams talk about a lot about communication and problem solving and stuff like that because of that level of, like, commitment and, like, mechanical skill and all this other stuff. Like, if you harp on someone's, like, blatant mess up, it lowers their morale. And it also makes other people go, like, kind of like, man, nah, no, nah. like, mm -hmm. you get the murmur. So I think that's definitely a, a good thing you guys say that you kind of treat those... Um, you, you admit to it and then just move on and then you discuss them like privately away from everyone else to kind of like keep that away from ruining everyone else's um you know flow i guess of each night and stuff like that so it's just yeah. different way how different people react to things that's true too that's true too yeah you just gotta find what works Mm-hmm. and another thing that you guys both mentioned is that uh, a lot of the well a lot of the girls that y'all compete with have sort of crumbled away and died uh, I'd love to hear a little more about that, especially since I know Spazzo had some experience in some of those places. Yeah. Yeah, yeah how uh, did that... The actual two guilds that I th in these notes are in Session and Exodus, and I mean, I was in both of them, and I basically witnessed firsthand, like, them imploding in front of my face, so oh. I kind of I seeked refuge at Midwinter, and I've been, I've been liking it so far, but yeah, hopefully more guilds don't die. That'd be nice. I mean, I know there's a lot of, you know, rumors running around about why that kind of thing happened, but, but what do you think is the problem? Because they're, they're not the only two guilds that have, um, that have left sort of the top-end <clears throat> scene. What would you say is the, is the cause behind uh, some of these big-name guilds just sort of closing up shop? Uh, which one do you want to go in first? Because I can do both. <laughs> oh, go ahead with Exodus. Okay. Uh, well, Exodus was basically like this entire, like, there were already a bunch of people from Varka and Exodus who, you know, they've been wanting US first for so long. And then they uh they're just like, you know, screw it, let's just let's just merge and let's see if we can get it one last time. And that's not really something you can you can do with a new guild especially. And um yeah, it didn't it didn't work out and then people just said they were done, so the guild just mm -hmm. decided to stop. But yeah. Mm. There just weren't enough people to salvage at the end. Sadly, but yeah. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. I know that there definitely has to be, it's like a fact of life um, when you get to that high level, and not just World of Warcraft, but like anything you see, um, there definitely can be fallout. I mean, like it even goes to like, what was the, the recent huge electronic uh, department store chain that just went belly up, right? Because they've just gotten, <laughs> they got so big and they couldn't handle it. Was it, it was not Office, it's Office Depot, was it? <laughs> One of those office ones, like yeah, it just yeah. co collapsed, right? And so, like yeah. it's it's on a smaller scale, obviously, with World of Warcraft raids. Once you get to that level, um, and it's just, it's just like a thing. Like you can have, like I mean, that guild had like probably the, the highest amount of like really good players I've ever seen in my life. Mm. But I mean, if they don't work well together, it's not going to work. So yeah, yeah. I know too. Killers wrote a really long Facebook post about it, and uh, you know, a lot of a lot of what you hear from casual players is like, oh, this game is so casual, and that's why all of the hardcore people are quitting. And that's really not it at all. If you look at the time commitment that these 
these people, y'all at the top, you two are are definitely doing that. The the kinds of the kind of time commitment that y'all are putting into this game, it's just it's completely nuts. Um, it's wild. Yeah, like it, if you want to like go to when WoW is more hardcore, maybe if you talk about vanilla with flask and potion farming and all that kind of stuff. But like right now, like I mean, we maintain at least two alts, um, and you know there are times where we wish that we had more. Um, and we ran five normal mode runs at the start of the start of the tier. So I mean, that's that's a lot of commitment even for normal modes. Whereas a lot of guilds are still only running, you know, one or two type of runs. So I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think you can really call that very casual at all. Only one or two runs. <laughs> only one or two. I love that phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> only one or two. No big Goodness. deal. So yep. casual. <laughs> Yeah, and it, well, it, the big thing I talked about at the beginning of the expansion was that how much harder it was to do the maintaining alt thing because of how Valor was and all the crap you had to farm and, and uh, reputations at first, and it was an absolute grind. I don't even know how you live outside of the game at that point, because I know Sloot, for example, has five, he has all five tanks. Yep, Right, like, what five. the, what the actual... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a he's a little bit crazy. He's a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy. I think oh. so. <laughs> Bad that, and sleep bag. He's that, in the chat here. That lion. Well, in, his, in his defense, tank gear <laughs> is just like, you know, he could just sponge it up. So mm -hmm. he can get geared pretty fast. But, but it's, yeah. you have to be, all that has to be prepared outside of raid. And you know, have to level all of those classes up too in the first place. And then play yeah. them proficiently and know their ins and outs and their math and their glyphs and their talents and whatever else, you know. So it's just, I don't know. Maybe that, that lion hat's laced with something to keep him awake. <laughs> yeah, but at, at the same time, like, I think they have recognized how difficult alts are and made them a lot easier, especially uh, as a 5-4. Like, um, you know, with uh, getting Valor. With scenarios, it's so easy now. Like, you can finish off your Valor now, yeah. in an hour. So, I mean, oh, I, I think it, if... It, and, yeah, coin farms. <sighs> and now, like, I think you can get your coins for the week just by doing those, like, four or five weekly chests on the island. So it's really not too bad to maintain alts, I think. Well, yeah, now. They've, they've figured it out now. This is two mm -hmm. content patches, or three, technically, into yeah. the expansion. But at After first... iterating on, on it for oh, a year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see that in the future, especially going into the next expansion, where you get in that first jump and they kind of know that there is this community that needs to have all this stuff done and they won't be so balls-bustingly difficult and a t huge time sink. So, like, I even remember Affinity's in the chat, too, I saw. I remember him being on stream, like, Valor grinding. He would, like, do all these dailies, and then I would check back, like, an hour later, he's on another alt doing all these dailies, and it's just, ugh. ugh yeah, the it's... beginning of Mop, it was, it was awful. Yeah. yeah it was, it was terrible. Bad. It was pretty terrible. So To do more in one character, like, one character would be fine. But... Yeah. Or and so, like, insane. In, in the same realm of, of the time commitment you need for raiding as much as you do what is up with the um progression beards that midwinter has <laughs> well that's all not right so much... <laughs> yeah not 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 so much this tier last year we did a big progression beard thing it was pretty awesome people uh basically grew beards until we killed Rudden, and some of them were getting pretty intense by the end <laughs> it's actually kind of cool too because we had uh former guildies who couldn't raid anymore but were still sort of part of the community and they uh they grew their beards out too until we uh, killed raw den so that was pretty awesome uh, was the <laughs> was there something tweeted or posted recently with sloot's current one or something like that but i thought i saw him on stream where he was just you know clean so was that an old progression beard i guess is it was the, the old uh, one leaked is it the one with the challenge mode gear that he's like photoshopped yeah. into i think that's what it was yeah. i like that i like the photoshop <laughs> yeah 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 it was pretty that's, good. Uh, that's an old one. Oh, I wish I could find it. There's one of me, too, in my uh, tier, tier 15 gear. Oh, no. yeah, okay. That's what it was. all the cosplay. So it was from, that was tier 15 then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was <laughs> that's so awesome, though. So, no, this is just me. I don't, I don't do progression or anything. It's just my face because I look like I'm 12. <laughs> I don't have facial hair. So, yeah. yeah same. Like, it takes me a month to grow anything, so. Oh, well, I wake up like this. It's a hard time growing any facial hair. It's really rough. I know. Honestly. Anna, your, your progression like beard is awful. Old. I know. So okay. bad. I got to try harder. You do have to try harder. So, and I guess then, um, to move on from that, what is like a... Um, how do you guys prep before an expansion, uh, a, a content patch comes out? And then what does it look like on your day-to-day -day basis during the first couple of weeks? Like what... Like break down how it is before... A patch comes out like PTR wise, like how much time you put into that, and then how much you do like each day. I don't know, Spazzo, do you want to like PTR first? Yeah, do PTR yeah. first, and then Riot can yeah. take day to day. I guess sure. So I guess however long PTR is, we'll just 
I don't know exactly how long they usually take, but if it, there's a couple of raids a day, like, I mean, I would have to miss, like, a couple during the day because of work and crap, but yeah, I think I made, like, at least, like, 75% 70, of them or something. But, like, other than alts and stuff, like, I think the main time commitment to gearing for uh, the patch was uh, divvying out the five runs that we did. Mm. Just make sure all the comps are good and that we could actually, you know, kill things with it. So, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, like, it's really not too intense until heroics come, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah and then, Ryth, what does it look like now when you're actually progressing through the heroic stuff? Like, what does a day-to-day -day look like for you guys? Oh, well, I mean, it's like we usually start around, like, 7 or so, so people have time to get home you know, grab a meal, maybe catch a nap or whatever. And then um, it's pretty much just go hard until about maybe like 10 or 11, take a short break, get a snack, get up, walk around, clear your mind type of thing, and then push hard until however late people can go. And I mean, we've done some nights where we finish at two o'clock like normal and some nights where we go until like 5 a.m. Two, two, I like how, oh my God. I like that was preface, two o'clock like normal, you know? Well, okay, so, so <laughs> to, to sort of, uh, put some context that our normal raid times like during farm are 10 to 2. Um, we actually raid, we start a little bit later than some guilds. Um, we have a lot of West Coast people in our guild, a couple people from yeah. Australia, that sort of thing. So that later start and end kind of helps. And then land down under. Yep. Mm -hmm. You have a good demographic, good spread. I don't think anyone in Crisp is from not outside the U.S. or way outside the time code that matters. Yeah. So we don't have a huge disparity in that. We're Most pretty split. The... We've got a we've got some West Coast people, so that's why I raid nine to one yeah. instead of eight to twelve anymore. Yeah, like, I think the, the guild is actually on a West Coast server because we raid. They raid at five thirty p.m., and mm -hmm. I, I raid at eight thirty for me. So like I'm up until midnight twelve thirty, uh, but they're done at like you know for them it's only ten. So usually well, nine thirty ten o'clock. So yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that's... raiding until two doesn't sound too bad to me. It's the raiding until five a.m. That sounds pretty. <laughs> yeah. That sounds pretty rough if you have to go to work the next day. Yeah. It is. It is. But like sometimes, like if you've been working on a boss and you're like at you know five six percent wipes type of thing, like you really just want to put in that last little bit and like sort of the adrenaline from having killed that boss the night before will kind of carry you through the day more or less. So it's <laughs> worth it in my that's, opinion. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I just don't know. I I I get all types of grouchy when I don't get at least four hours to go to work. Oh, I, I was upset, but we still killed a boss. <laughs> I was upset. <laughs> we still killed yeah. a boss, so, you know, that counted it. Mm -hmm. mm. So how much uh, out of raid, like, how many hours out of raid do you think you have to spend prepping? Since you're doing all this time in raid, you know, when are you finding the time to, like, farm your coins and get your valor? Oh, I did all that crap before. Like, I'm sitting yeah. on, like, 600 coins right now. Mm -hmm. On my road. And, and then, like, I mean, on the weekends, like, I'll usually log in on, uh, on Earlier, Saturday, yeah. yeah, and just finish off like the Valor on my main and one of my alts if I have time type of thing. So, I mean, that's the one thing during progression right now is that, except for a few people, like we've kind of identified the alts that may or may not be useful. So not everyone is like, you know, going hard with their alts type of thing. It's only the um, select few people. So that yeah, makes like it a little I'll... bit easier for a lot of us. I'm just sitting on my rogue now, so life is kind of good. Hmm. But, yeah. Oh, not keeping your red up to date? <laughs> no. Oh. Nope, not keeping the red up to date. Uh, makes Unless, me sad. like, Garrosh needs, you know, 12 red paladins. You know. That 4 piece set bonus, possible. all that free AoE, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Divine Storm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Spike brings it up in chat. 600, I'm at 4,000. Yeah, I think someone in the guild in, in Crisp has, like, 7,500 or something dumb. Like, yeah. literally, they cannot, they cannot and will not spend the coins before the expansion is over. So that's one of the things that I know they nerfed the uh, or lowered how many coins you need to turn in to make your Warforged seals or whatever else in the past, you know, content patches had it. But they weren't, there wasn't anything else to do with the coins. And for some people, they just have plethoras of them. You can't yeah, send them. If I didn't them... do alts, I'd have thousands. Yeah, that's true too. If you spend it on call, that's only on your rogue, that's right. So. Yeah. Wish you guys could sell them to me. <laughs> Perfectly honestly. Well, I hate that grind. Well, to just be do honest one about this coin farms, and you'll be good. Dude, yeah. Timeless even, Isle. Uh, timeless, timeless Isle. Timeless Isle. Do oh. those weekly chests and you'll have like 70 coins. Like, And actually, yeah. like we spent hours doing those coin farms and I think it would have been less overall time to just do the chests on the Timeless Isle had I known that would be the, the way it would be. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the all the um, the barons farming, all the lumber guys, 
or yep. whatever. Yeah, I wasted a couple hours doing that, and then Timeless Isle comes out, and then I just played the Timeless Isle like all day before raid, and I gained like 300 coins. I didn't even realize it. I was like, well, damn it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, a couple minutes ago, you guys were talking about how you like prioritized certain alts, or uh, or that you know you had certain alts that you thought would be more useful. And I guess that kind of moves us into the next topic, which is class stacking. Um, I suppose some of those alts are are particularly useful because of the classes that they are. Um, so I'm I'm wondering how prevalent um, class stacking has been this expansion, but also so far this tier, um, whether you've done a whole lot of it or not. Um, I wouldn't really say we've done a ton of class stacking, to be perfectly honest. Like, I think maybe like one or two people playing different uh, characters per boss type of thing um, for this tier. Probably the worst case we've ever had of class stacking was uh, back in tier 14 for Will of the Emperor. I think mm -hmm. we actually brought in two like pug mages to help do the CC rotation on, oh, on those ads. I remember really? that. I remember that. Was it yeah. were they mages from another guild or just like mages from trade chat? I, they were, I'm pretty sure they were actually from trade chat. So <laughs> I mean oh. that's that that's probably the oh. worst case we've dealt with. But like yeah, in Siege, I mean we brought uh, we brought someone played their rogue on Siege Crafter. Uh, someone was playing their hunter, that sort of thing. Um, but like we, we've pretty much identified like rogues and warlocks as two sort of good alts to keep on hand, um, especially warlocks because we, our strats from what rogues. I've seen in videos, we uh, we use lots of warlock portals. We like to use them a lot. Yeah, so those are a little. I, Everyone I, loves warlock portals. I really wonder about the archetype of game changing mechanics, and I think in MOP that is probably the biggest one where they had to not only build fights around the option of having four or twelve warlocks. Or just having the, the the distance in the raid to, that you needed to have them, right? Like you either needed them or you could use them to greater effect on fights you didn't need them, right? I wonder if that's going to change in the new expansion if they make them um, as mandatory or kind of like limit them. Like maybe you can't have more than two down in a raid. Like they have charges or some global yeah. filter. Because, yeah, I mean, Heroic Lei Shen was really easy with four, but not that easy with like one, which is what I dealt with. So, yeah. yeah. It's I mean, definitely it was doable, but you it's killed just it with such one portal. It's, one it's portal. Yeah, so did a uh, one or uh, two. two one. Wow. Did it with props to you. I, yeah. I want to say minimum of one. I don't know if we've had two warlocks. We've had warlock issues. We've gone. I mean, through. you had ghost wolf, so you must have been good. Well, I was fine. I, I personally was death fine. <laughs> the death yeah. knights, they have like nothing. Poor death knights, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, did our one portal die on the kill too, Chesty? Oh god. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, even with the portals, like, they're still, like, retardedly, like, good at damage and stuff, so... Mm -hmm. It's just, like, a win-win. Oh, yeah. yeah portals like, aren't the only problem. It's just they bring so much... They bring so much else, too. They had great oh, yeah. DPS on the move, multi-dots, incredibly high single-target DPS. It's just they... The Warlocks had too much. Damn, Warlocks. They still have too much. <laughs> and they still have too much. I don't understand it. Everyone's known it's been a problem for months and months. Like, I don't know how you... I don't know how you raided in T15 without being like, man, warlocks are really a problem. And then we go into T16 and they're still they're still doing all of their shit. So, I don't know. I mean, I really wish that it sucks cuz I it I hate to be like, man, I really wish this one class got gets nerfed, but sometimes you really have to. So, yeah, well, and then they did get nerfed. They just did get nerfed. They had a huge dot nerf recently, didn't they? Just in, like, this hot fix, like, last week. And they're still, like, top and, three and, damage. It doesn't, right? didn't even affect them. I was like, okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't play a, a warlock at all, but my warlock friend's saying, like, they're just laughing. Like, yeah, they didn't do anything. It didn't really do just much. just like, oh, my God. I th it, it, it helped the overscaling that's going to happen if they didn't do it in the first place, where I think Windwalker monks need that right now because... <laughs> That is far and beyond that and Feral Druids. They buffed the crap out of Feral Druids because no one's playing them. And now if you have one in your guild, there are millions, like dozens yeah. of millions of DPS ahead of oh any other one else. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was looking at logs, and I think on single target fights, like, our Feral was 15 to 20 million ahead of the next closest DPS. Like, that is just Targeted. a huge, huge gap. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's not even, like, a percent or two. It is just, like I said, do like, and Riot has said, dozens of millions so, and that's like Windwalkers as well, because if they get the gear jump, like our Windwalkers got heroic Warforged main handed and heroic offhand, I think right now, and he's just you can't touch him. No other melee in the guild right now can touch him. He's just like dozens of millions ahead, and it's just ridiculous how different. And it has to be fixed because if they get more gear, mm -hmm. unless they want the snowball that hard, or you need the damage later on in the tier, which I don't think you do because you guys are doing without like you know 570 eye level right now. Yeah. 
there's some things coming, some reckonings for those two classes, I think, in the future. <laughs> It'll be like oh, I think all over I, again. I mean, we can hope so. I, yeah. I think Feral, Feral more than Windwalker, because Windwalker doesn't really bring a whole lot outside of that damage. Outside of that. So you're I, right, you're right, you're right. So at least they're fitting that niche, and you know you have to give up something to have one in the raid and get all that damage, but Ferals bring a ton of utility oh, yeah. as well. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. they, they bring way too many awesome talents and things that are, yeah. Windwalkers I, have, like, DPS. I mean, on one hand, I'm kind of glad to see Melee suffering from this problem but what? Uh, but you know uh, on the other hand i'm not one of the chosen melee classes that's that's one of these two that we're talking about so you know i i want to see it fixed uh, it's it just irks me well for the regarding you like red paladins are severely underrepresented i think too and and you guys are getting better um as i don't know if you on, could say so. that we're underrepresented or underrepresented yep. in like the top five um not necessarily in like the top 100 yeah um, but and the I think the set bonus is going to go a long way towards making us a, a much more viable class. So we mm. were pretty we were pretty limited in a lot of encounters that had that that called for cleave. Um, but so I, I'm I'm hoping to see how it goes. Not a whole lot of rets have the set bonus yet, so uh, there's no way to tell. I, I don't think that we're going to be seeing any more rets in like the U.S. top five or so. But I I think that they'll they'll be just fine in most guilds. Yeah. The thing is, though, like, I think they're just gonna, they're using, they've always done this with the rats. They'll always use, like, their set bonus to, like, test a new, like, mechanic for them. Yeah. Like, uh, was it tier 13 that added the judgment extra holy power? Yep. Judge extra yeah, holy and power, the, and then the. Became, yeah, so I think they'll add something next expansion. And the yeah. Avenging Wrath from down, down a minute in cooldown, and, and the Inquisition going longer. They've always used the set bonus to test that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love it, because I love the set bonus, so I'd like it to go baseline. Uh, but we'll see. Well, I know we're talking about, like, they, they do set bonuses to test out mechanics to bring into the fold of classes. I know Ryath and I are sitting here going, like, so you want to make that Lava Lash set bonus baseline there? <laughs> so our, you know, we have some actual, you know, some AOE competitiveness. You know? <laughs> Worst and hardest and most freaking weird yes. AOE to set up in the, in, the, in, the, in the game. And they're giving us the reset on Lava Lash, which is good. But they need to go baseline, Blizzard, Please. Please. Or something, or something better, please. Like, or I something let's better. Not, let's not stop. Let's, let's not just like take what they give us. Like, let's give yeah. us something a little bit better than that set bonus. Oh, Chrome. Yeah, Chrome has been talking chat about arms as the hardest alien rotation in the game. It is so funny. <laughs> we knew Rose Storm. So we knew going into this that Warriors finally got buffed because the first two tiers they were kind of like they brought the best raid uh, cooldown in the game outside of like heroism or whatever but like Crip Banner was far and beyond a huge DPS increase but then you, you had to bring one for that but they themselves did crap so then we went into tier 16 going like so wars are good now right our first big AOE pull I think on Galacrass we pulled like two or three cannons and what did Chromag hit like four million DPS or something stupid <gasps> hit like wow. two buttons two buttons and it's like Pfft. This happened last expansion too, though. Like, I mean, yeah, warriors, warriors just scale like insane. Yeah, I don't know. They do. It always seems like some classes are like super strong at the beginning and then like teeter off toward the end of expansion, like and mages, vice versa. Mages are pretty good. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Like mages at the beginning of expansion. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, how it's... much uh, class swapping have you guys seen in midwinter? Much uh -huh. at all? Mm -hmm. Our raid leader's done it a few times. He started off windwalker, then warrior, and now he's rogue. Um, and okay. other than that, nothing, <laughs> nothing, yeah, a couple switches, that's about it, nothing, nothing major beyond that, I know, uh, um, Slute has been playing his warrior a bit on some of the fights, so, I don't know, not, not a whole lot of class switching, though, people tend to stick more to their classes, it seems. Hmm. Yeah, me re-rolling was the whole point of avoiding that. <laughs> Rogue oh, on really? everything. Huh. Yeah, it seemed it's like a pretty nice. safe choice. Oh, yeah. When did you switch yep. to Rogue? Uh, like, during farm like in may june yeah may. yeah i thought it was fairly recent yeah so i mean i'm still still learning crap but yeah mm -hmm. it's pretty 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 awesome so i guess while we dig into classes so much and we're like kind of like just blaming about it uh we can talk a little bit about what has actually happened for for rogues and uh shaman and paladin i guess we'll we'll let you talk to anna um so we'll just wrap this up into one big uh, chunk right here to talk about how these classes have changed in the Siege, I guess, just to bring us up to speed. Because I know the, the big point of the backbone of the show is we talk about classes and, and divulge into them you know, deeply. But for a little bit of this, so how is... Um, we'll start with Rogues then. You said there wasn't, wasn't a lot with Rogues that happened? Oh yeah, Assassination but, like, didn't even like get touched. Yeah. But uh, I don't really play combat that much, so I really can't like talk about it that much, but... 
combat's been doing pretty good damage wise. And as long as you have like the cooldown reduction trinket and a pretty pretty good main hand, you should probably go combat. But I heard, yeah, like just one big weapon and just blade flurry everything, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. Blade yeah. flurry all the things. Yeah, all the stuff. And what about what about Red Anna? Um, moving into siege. What changed yeah. for Rhett? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the biggest change is when you move from the T15 to T16, which I just did. Um, so that's going to be that. That's a big adjustment because with T15, it's a completely single target set bonus. Uh, it procs off Crusader Strike and it buffs Templar's Verdict, which means that you end up not cleaving um, in situations where there's like two mobs around you because you do more damage just to a single target, which is boring. I mean, I know a lot of people thought that like the 500k uh, TVs were really exciting, um, but I I thought it was kind of boring. So moving to the T16 bonus, you get the free proc Divine Storms, and those are really exciting, first of all, because they represent something new in your rotation to hit. Uh, but secondly, you're not constrained to single target anymore. You can cleave all you want at any time, um, and that, that is something that's really fun. <laughs> Freedom to cleave. Um, Freedom to yeah. cleave and passive cleave, which is the best thing. I'm so excited. That oh. I said this last week, and everyone was like, Anna, you're such a meter patter. You know, why are you a meter maid? And I'm like, no, I'm always on the right target. I'm always, well, maybe not always. Um, ah. But I'm, I'm, I'm really not that person who, who does cleave when we're supposed to be focusing single target. Like, very much not. It, it oh, hurts yeah. me when other people do that. Um, and my raid leader would have absolutely no patience for it. Uh, but at the same time, like, it really irks me that a lot of other classes have passive cleave, and especially doing T14 with all those DKs. Um, so the fact that there's a little passive cleave in my single target rotation just, it makes me smile. It makes mm -hmm. me happy. It makes me happy well, person. I'm like an assassination rogue. Like, just go to the boss damage frame, and then your life is good. Because mm -hmm. you see all those, all those, like, cleavers at the top, and you're like, wow, I'm really low. And then you just go to the boss damage, like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I always used to top. do that with Rhett, and I know you know yeah. that feeling. It's like you, you're, you're looking at the damage meter, and you're like, damn, and then you, you break it down to like whatever the most important add is, and you're like, yeah, there I am, you know, near the top, because single target burst, man, it's my thing. It's kind of nice to, to sort of be all across the board. And and yeah, just like what Orshabal just said in uh, in chat, Garage for Rhett's, like, if you, get, if you get procs on the pole with all those ads around, it's like the most meaningless thing ever, but to see my combat text do like, 2.5 million divine storm i'm just like yes yes it's so good <laughs> uh, it's the, it's the most beautiful feeling um well, so I, I, I loved it i think too though like i've i've done a lot of sort of log crawling since he started progression and like looking at boss damage versus like add damage and that kind of stuff like it seems pretty even like the the Classes that say can't handle the ads as well definitely do a lot more uh, boss dps yeah so mm -hmm. it is something you definitely have to balance in your raid for sure yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say and lead us into to Shaman is that I usually try to AOE on, like, when stuff matters, right? Like, I, and, and Ryth and I are probably in the same mindset on this. Like, we try to AOE when it matters now because we're mastery stacking and fire, you know, fire Nova is not terrible now. And we usually have Echo when we have to uh, AOE so we can double proc. But outside of that, halfway through a fire, I just toggle the boss damage because I'm usually, like, in the top three. And the top one is, like, one of the tanks, like a warrior tank, like, mass. It's just crazy. But that's what matters more in some regards, because ads have to die, sure, mm -hmm. but you still got to kill the boss. And people that are AoEing crazy are usually not even in the top 8 to 10 in single target damage, because they've spent so much time AoEing, which they're important as much as the single target people are important, too. So Yeah. It's one of the things that I think makes cleave fights more interesting, is like if you're in a situation where ads have to die, but they don't have to die right away, the, the question you have to ask yourself yeah. and, and the whole raid is, so how much cleave should we be doing? And I know at least for Rhett, there are a couple different decisions I can make um, as far as, you know, how much cleave, how much single target am I actually sacrificing to cleave here? And the, the nice thing about the changes is before, I really couldn't sacrifice any. Because if I was going to do any significant damage piece, to, yeah. that, to that ad, you have to be Crusader striking and TVing. And now I actually have the option. It doesn't mean that I'm always going to cleave, but I have the option to cleave if I want to without... Yeah completely trashing my single target DPS. So. Yep. So then, yeah, Ryan, what has changed with uh, with enhancement going into... Well, I guess the biggest one is making Fire Nova not a bad spell. It's actually quite good now if you can pull it off. Um, and the yeah. other the other changes are relatively minor. They did nerf our Storm Blast and Storm Strike damage, which is single target. Um, but then with a recent hotfix, they pretty much reverted that. But uh, it's from sort of passive damage, so it sort of rewards you more for sticking to the boss. Um, but I guess the one I really talk about is Fire Nova. Um, because, you know, it is it is a AoE that takes three to four GCDs to set up correctly. Um, and now it actually does substantial damage while doing it. Like I remember uh, just 
to use a trash pack as an example, the tanks made some sort of off the hang or off the cuff comment saying, "Oh, I didn't win trash meters," and yeah, so I mean that's sort of the strength of Fire Nova right now. Yeah, no, I definitely understand that, and we we felt that for a long time. I know we've talked about a lot in the Shaman Council about how our AOE was just like, do we even care? Right? And, like, the last two tiers, Aww. I didn't even worry about it. Like, I never even cared. If I got off a perfect rotation and it landed with the flame shock onto a Fire Nova when there was AoE ads, whatever. But 98% yeah. of the time, I, I just didn't even worry about it. Because it was well, a waste it, of time. It's uh, it's also a good... Like, the this AoE sort of uh, is really good for cases where you just want to passively cleave ads down. Because yeah. the Fire Nova is, like, say, use Garrosh as an example, and you have, like, eight bosses or eight mobs centered around the boss... <laughs> At that point, Fire Nova actually becomes one of your biggest single target abilities because you have eight of them going off, possibly proccing Echo and all hitting the boss. So, like for us, it's actually a single target increase to have Correct, all yeah. those mobs up and being cleaved. Yeah. What is going on with what is going on right now, Spazzo? You okay? Nothing, what's I'm what's fine. going on there? You getting? I keep people getting... keep getting timed out in chat too. I don't understand. So many no, that's get... not me. I'm doing Black Temple right now. No, I, yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing something crazy, but Sorry. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. With people make me chuckle. No, oh, but uh, with with Fire Nova, yeah. Like, what's the breakpoint math? Like, isn't it only two or three to make it a, a um, worthwhile button? Yeah, for single you do target. Use it, for single target, you do want to use it with two targets. Um, yeah, you they would uh, it would be at the bottom of your uh, priority at that point. Uh, but with uh, I want to say around four targets, it's pretty pretty much near the top at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of like seeing melee get a little more cleave because I feel like this is one of those places where we've been falling behind ranged. Ranged, can, can, they can cleave more effectively on spread targets than we ever could anyway. So I feel like we really should have effective cleave for targets that are grouped up. But the reality is that a lot of us haven't. I mean, at least what I've been hearing out of the Enhancement Shaman talking to you guys, and I know the way that my class has worked, um, we're in the best cleave situation that we've ever been in now, but that it just hasn't been true for a long time. And I have to wonder how much that's affected, you know, class balance and raids and our ability it's to usually only to just be the right warriors, class. Yeah. 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 Well, what ha I guess what happened yeah. is back in Wrath, everybody had passive cleave, like literally everybody, and they really yeah. tried to take a lot of that back. Um, but at the same time, when they took that back, they didn't take back multi dotting, right? So um, mm -hmm. I think that sort of multi dotting is probably next on the chopping block to sort of get some some damage taken away from it. Sort of get like the like with warlocks, you get more dot damage on your main target via haunt, like mechanics like that to sort of ramp up the single target damage and bring down the multi target damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. There's going to be a lot of things that they've learned, uh, especially because they have so much more data because of LFR being for a full expansion and flex now coming at the end of it for going to the next X-Pack with like the raid balance and, and class balance scheme. Because, you know, previously they only had basically normal and then like eventually heroic mode settings and like the raid scene was so small. But then with the onset of both LFR and flex, they have so much more metadata. I'm sure they can really figure out, well, you know, like... Warlocks and warriors do so much clear damage. Let's figure that out right now or something, you know, because it's just like they dominate that scene um, yep. to kind of spread that around. Because I think that not every class should have answers to everything, both single target and AOE and cleaving cross dot and whatever. But some classes just do it, everything too well right now. Yeah. So, but I don't know what's going on with chat right now. You guys are going crazy with this blacklist spam. I don't understand. You guys are going nuts. Yeah. Nightbot's Cup. just putting the hammer down on, our, on some of our chat people. It's pretty yep. crazy. Yep. So, you know, I mean, oh, we've geez. all talked about the changes that we that we like the best. So maybe we should all complain about the changes that we like the least. Oh, uh, there you go. Well, you start then. Go, Anna. Just put um, it off. Well, I don't really have any I don't really have any changes to Rhett that I that I didn't like. Um, Rhett, well, Rhett didn't really get any changes. So I'm not I mean, I'm not trying to be like. I, I don't know, uh, too positive or anything like that. We, mm -hmm. we just had so few changes. Um, I, I mean, besides pulling our cooldowns to a, from five minutes to three, the Guardian cooldown, and I'm fine with that. Uh, Inquisition longer, and I'm fine with that too, in the set bonus, and I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, and the, I mean, all of our changes were really positive. <laughs> Yeah. So well, there you maybe go. chat. Maybe chat can think of one that I didn't. Um, I got to say that another change I didn't mention on the show um, last week or this week was the fact that our uh, our talent, Unbreakable Spirit, now just halves the cooldown on our on our relevant abilities instead of like doing this thing where how many, however many holy power you spend, pulls it down. And it is nuts having access huh. to that stuff 
twice as often as before is just nuts. With my cooldown reduction trinket, I have a 20 second cooldown on divine protection, and it's a 10 second buff, so I can have divine protection up 50% of the time. Well, you got one of those? Oh my god. Yeah, I got a uh, I got a heroic oh warforged my one. God. <laughs> heroic <laughs> warforged. Oh it's my god! It's I level five eighty. Yep. I know everyone kind of. So went you can back. basically like just heal yourself. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Just keep a blanket div product. Yeah, all the melee yeah, in my I, guild are gonna like sneak over and and try to like kill me in my sleep for that trinket or something. It was wow. pretty well, Did you I know, know what you're. No, oh, she was she was giving oh, it. Didn't. Yeah. No, oh. it dropped off the boss. It dropped off yeah. the boss, and I uh, I won it uh, mm -hmm. off of a DK and a warrior. I know what your job is going to be when you get to Siege Crafter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, soaking them minds though. Soaking them minds. <sighs> but so I guess it will go back to um, Ryath. What is um, what's not good for enhancement? I know you well, touched on a little bit, but we can go back to it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a little bit sad about the the healing change. Like, don't get me wrong, it was completely overpowered. Uh, we did so much off healing, especially on a fight like Raden. Um, but like, they literally nerfed it into the ground to where it's probably not worth even using anymore. Which is kind of sad because I do like the play style um, of kind of like a I guess re reverse atonement, where you do sort of almost full damage and then a little bit of healing. Yeah. Um, that would be that's sort of a nice niche, and I would like to see it sort of come back at some point. But yeah, I kind of understand why it was nerfed, and I am sad to see it go. Yeah, I think Aww. actually, just dropping a healing rain now is kind of like meh. But like to yeah. really gain the benefit of it, you need to ag and like ascend during you're sitting in the healing rain to really make the healing rain worth a damn. Basically, I think the only fights I've used it on have been. Malkarok now, maybe? Like, one at the beginning? And, like, maybe it, sometimes on Iron Juggernaut. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is worth it for uh, for Ancestral Guidance simply because, you yeah. know, all those ticks are being copied onto the whole raid. So, yeah. I mean, that, but that's more because of the way the, the way the ability works than actually, like, providing raw healing output like it used to. Yep. And what about Rogue, Spazzo? What have you guys... What's happened with you guys? Uh, the complaints? worst? Yeah, complaints. No complaints. Really? Really? Oh, I'm glad somebody else doesn't have any complaints either. No that complaints. Feel complaints. Nothing. Rogues yeah, he, are good. Good place. He, I mean, Rogues are in a good place. He got buffed after like he was already winning PTR. So like, how does that happen? Ah. Well, Sessor Resolve got nerfed a little bit, but. Oh, okay. It's only like 8k off our, off our raw DPS. So it's whatever. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, my biggest complaint right now is that I have dump trink or not trinkets, uh, daggers, but. Maybe oh, well, that's drop. that's the loot RNG. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I get like a main hand, oh man, it'd be. Well, I, I think Spaz be has been good. suffering like six months worth of loot RNG. Like it's kind of over the top by this point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd pay a pretty penny for a dagger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez, I don't even know. I mean, uh, last tier, I don't think we saw the proper. Fist weapon for enhancement until our last kill of twins, and by then I didn't even care anymore. Yeah, it was one of twins. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't. I, I was like, oh, look at our last twins kill. Well, I already have Did two. You guys H use the axe off uh, council. Yeah, I used two was... HTF axes. Mm -hmm. And the yep. mace off of the animus was the other one. Yeah, yeah well, we never saw. That's what I, I think. I coined both of the axes we got off of council. I, they just didn't exist. What do you guys use now? Like, what's your idea of the claw off projectors? Yeah, they're both actually kind of bad. Oh, they're yeah. all bad. The drill is probably the best. Oh, the one option. Jug? Yeah. The one you the one you really want is two of the Paragon weapons, but they're kind of like really deep, right? So it's yeah, exactly. not really an option for a lot of people. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about those because a lot of people aren't really ever seen them for a long time, right? So, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, the, technically, the the axes off of Garrosh Heroic, not not comparing against Warforged, are can be best in slot. But once you get a Warforged weapon, it overtakes it by eye level, so... Because they're the same. But, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The weapon I really want is the one off Thok. And it's got nothing to do with what's best in slot. It's just because it's a polearm, and I've wanted a polearm all year long. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a terrible thing to say for someone who's a serious raider that I want a weapon just because it's awesome. And it's cool if I'm not wearing it. Like, if I have a better weapon, then that's fine. Um, but that, that polearm off Thok is just... It's awesome. I want it. I want it. It's been so long since we had a strength polearm in the game. Yeah. You could. What is it? You can transform it. You can do pull arms to staves, right? Because I think. Well, no, because paladins can't use staves, and you can only transmog well, yeah, to, to, what, you can uh, use. to yeah. what you can use. So I can yeah, only transmog. Yeah, black, black ice. Black ice. That's there you I go. Went, as soon as I saw there was a pull arm in the next tier, very first thing I did was go farm up black ice, and then oh, I built man, a, cute, yeah. a cute little purple transmog set to go with it too. I think 
But I think it is it is it Cro-Mag in my guild? Because Warriors can go to staves, and I think he has the pull army. He turned it into the broom. That's worth. I think that's no. a good that's a good transmog right there. But Prom dates um, the the freaking pull arm never dropped. Never not a single time. Uh, the yeah. one last year. And that's it's one of the reasons why I absolutely hate these uh, these shared drop loot tables. And I hope that of all the experiments Blizzard has done with loot, I really hope they don't do this like shared loot table with two percent drop rates on weapons thing again. It's just insanely frustrating. We never yeah. saw a pull arm and it sucked. It made me sad. Yeah. Well we actually saw a lot of like like the regular it was like Heroic not Thunderforge. I don't get that. If you're going to have something that's so random that drops, why wouldn't it just be Thunderforge? Mm -hmm. If it's shared, you mean, in the really low yeah, chance? Yeah. Like, yeah. So. Just, like, insane. Yeah, I don't know. I think they've they've learned a lot. Because, again, they did Thunderforge and Warforge now. This is the first two times they've done it, um, the iterations of it. So, again, I think they just, they're going to learn a lot from Mop. And since Mop was sort of like a filler expansion pack based on their, like, overarching story of World of Warcraft... Um, I think we'll definitely see a lot of improvements in the Dark Below or whatever the fuzz the next uh, expansion is. So it's the Dark Below. I'm calling it. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are calling it. I'm gonna go off of what Noble the Noble said in a lot of his uh, lore videos on YouTube. I believe. I believe he broke down the three possibilities and like timelined which one has the best weight to be based on the story and what's happened in WoW. And which yeah. one did he decide? I forget. Uh, he's Dark Below is his best one. It's gonna be oh, Nazoth okay. so like... focused uh, expansion. With the last remaining old god on Azeroth being our focus point, um, the re-cleansing of the Sunwell is going to be a big point. And then once we think about that, like once we're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, the old gods are all tame and Azeroth is cleansed, the expansion after that is bringing Legion. And we're like, oh. Isn't there going to be like, I don't remember exactly, but isn't there going to be like a little bit of like burning Legion with the re-cleansing of the Sunwell? Well, that's the whole thing is that if you, if you want to... Because that font of power is so tainted. I don't know. That might be like a, a precursor. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. Uh, but yeah. But we're we're actually working on technically uh, in the background. What I've been working on lately is trying to get novel on the show with Jesse Cox to do lore episodes of the show. Which that's like the first time I said it now. So just keep out on the down low, sort of. But uh, we're working on that in the future to do one lore episode a month or, or something in that, that realm that we can actually talk about, you know, spoilers and, and theory crafting and stuff like that. To kind of have a different show, it'll just kind of run parallel to the Final Boss one, whereas you have three a month that are this, and then we have one a month that's the lore episode. But I will take a minute real quick here to tell you guys about some awesome, awesome websites and communities that help make Final Boss what it is today and continue to help us grow. So the main one, of course, is going to be the ever-present Mana Flask. Mana Flask is awesome. I think the cool thing the Mana Flask is doing right now is this uh, race um, watch the, for the 13 and 14 to, like, count down. Oh, no. Come on. Go, Mana Flask. Go. They're counting down and cataloging all of the kills uh, for this tier. And actually, just a little while ago, they did a... It was on the top bar, but now I don't see it. They were actually going back, and what Riggs was talking about in the a little while ago on his episode where he was talking about getting to know who killed all of the bosses back in the day they actually oh error 552 oh well, that's that's no good website is offline or 522 they were they were going back in previous expansions and finding out um where all the kills were coming from like all the way back to vanilla and that's so cool like the time the timeline of everything but uh, if you guys want to go check out mana flask check out buzzkill's lair whole bunch of other community articles and things that they break down here. And there's, of course, there's us. And also, in that same realm, if you are a, a prodded in, you could go check out sacredduty.net. This is an awesome little blog that Anna is a part of. And Thek is a, is a big, uh, it's, like, it's probably mostly just Thek's blog, right? Like, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It, but, it, is, it is his blog, and the, and the other yep. two of us just help out with it. Yeah, it's awesome. But it breaks down so much prod info right here. All the stuff right there, all these, I don't even know. I look at this today and I was like, what is all these action script crazy, what is all this wild macro, are these macros on the on the front page here? Those or, are those are SimCraft priority lists. Oh, SimCraft priority <laughs> lists. Oh, crap. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah, he's done a whole lot of work re recently on uh, on sort of codifying how yeah. to how to talk about tank survivability and it's an ongoing process uh it's hmm. it's really interesting stuff he sort of digs into the details of what he's been doing with simcraft um and how to sort of make a general metric that it will measure tank survivability and it's not perfect yet um but it's it's something that a lot of tanks are watching so it's Very definitely cool. definitely worth a look 
Yeah, but if you if you ha if you're a tank or you have you know gillies that are tanks, go check out sickerduty.net if you're of the prot variation. And then of course there's finalboss.tv. We're right there. We have our website. We actually just recently got the audio only versions of the shows now, and they go up a day or two after the live version. You can also just look us up on iTunes. We are just right there at Final Boss TV, or you can stream it right here off of the website. Um, the RSS feed works. You can probably just grab it and knock it into your. Um, uh, I think Stitcher should just grab the RSS feed if you use it. But uh, yeah, we're right there. And if you want to help us out, you can definitely throw a donation over to Final Boss and help our eye level upgrades and help us bring a better. Uh, show to you. There's tons of little things that we want to get in the future here, but they are expensive to upgrade the show for you guys. Because right now, kind of running off of a pretty janky setup that is held together with duct tape and, and love and prayers. <laughs> so it could be a lot better. Just need uh, need help from you guys. Our mobs and minions are awesome because our instance would be nothing without you guys. So thank you guys very much. You can check out our awesome communities, and of course there are more in the description boxes on uh, on. Uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that. There's always more that we just put. We can't fit all of them in there. And eventually on the website, we're going to have a communities page where you can see all the awesome websites we're a part of and that we work with uh, just to help spread really good knowledge to you guys. So, that was enough about that. Let's move on. Back Getting to talking about raiding. Meat and potatoes, the main point. Midwinter is coming. Let's do the Siege of Ogremar 25. Is the, I guess, the last raid we're gonna have this expansion we don't know if there's gonna be like a 5.5 kind of like teaser or something or other for the next expansion we don't know yet it was confirmed and then not confirmed and yeah but um so i guess what your guys initial impressions of are the first eight bosses or more if you want to talk about um the newer ones that have just recently been killed but uh yeah if riath or spaza wants to give us the insider look at sure yeah. you can go first oh. yeah sure <laughs> so yeah i mean the first eight bosses are i think a little bit of a blur for us i think we kind of like we went in sort of very unsure of how difficult some of these bosses were going to be. We did yeah. kill a couple of them on PTR, but I mean, we just blazed through the first eight and we were kind of like going like, Oh my God, we we're eight bosses in like, are like, what are the rest going to be like? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So there's definitely a lot of potential in them. Like, you know, you look at a, at a fight like uh, protectors or Shaw and like, they're sort of very visually appealing and they have a lot of good mechanics to them, but like, they just don't really like come together into sort of a difficult, uh, boss encounter yeah uh, so that's the unfortunate part the next the next uh set of bosses though are definitely sort of renewed my faith in the instance um they the difficulty definitely ramps up pretty smoothly with each boss but uh it does get pretty difficult from number nine onwards i'd say mm -hmm. yeah, yeah same experience for me thing just died and i hit mute and i was like okay <laughs> is that that was it for you yeah the that first couple it. of yeah, the first couple of bosses yeah um, I think it was also a little different for you guys too because you had so much normal gear and so many set bonuses. That's why the first a lot like just died like day one, day two. Whereas mm -hmm. I know we had like some, um, we had some enrage problems on doing the patchwork version of Narushen, where we had yeah. like we had like the kill as the yellow was creeping in on us kind of deal. So because we only had one normal clear, obviously. But then after that, yeah, they get a little more complicated each fight, and then you get to Malkarak and spoils and Thok. So. You actually picked out exactly the two bosses that I was thinking, uh, Ryeth. I was when we were doing protectors and we were doing Shaw. I, I just remember thinking to myself, like, man, these fights really have potential. Um, these fights could be could be really difficult fights, and I, I don't think it's. I guess clearly Blizzard wanted there to be a, a difficulty progression from easier to harder through the instance. But on heroic, since you can toggle every boss, I don't think it's hugely problematic to have hard bosses at the beginning. So I. Uh, I just, I really wanted both Protectors and Shaw, um, and Shamans and, and Norushan, I think, would be the ones that I wanted them to be more difficult, and they just, uh, they just weren't, and it, it really bummed me out. I, I had high hopes for them. Mm -hmm. um, well, like, Galacrest, think... like, that thing was, like, it was so weird, like, you'd think after Shaw, like, Galacrest would be a little more harder, and it was just, like, easier, it was just, like, okay. mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think Shaw was a total joke. Um, no, it a... wasn't. No, not at all. We had a really rough raid week the very first week of Heroics. We didn't have the comp to do the Zerg Strat on Norishin, which is why we ended up um, with only a couple Heroics, and then we just blew through them the week afterwards. Um, but, you know, I guess it just depends on whether you're, you know, what kind of mindset you're in hitting the bosses. We happen to not have very much trouble with Shaw, but I, I know from hearing other people who worked on that fight that Shaw was a bit of a roadblock within the first eight, probably the hardest of the first eight. So, yeah, I, I could yeah. definitely... I could definitely see that being the case. I mean, our perspective is a little bit skewed because, you know, we did funnel 
loot uh, from the five normal mode runs into each each character. So then we're doing Shaw with you know 25 extremely geared characters. Yeah. Um, and with Shaw, I mean, the difficulty comes with high pride. And so if you're killing him so fast that you don't really have to spend much time at high pride, yeah, that I mean, that fight really loses its difficulty edge at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And those were fights too. I know Anna talked about them too. And, and to start with the in front of the instance, I think that the this difficulty curve, at least from from my point of view, the first eight, like it didn't really like increase that much until you really get to no. Malkarok. And that was, I think, on pitfalls on protectors of the fallen and um, dark shaman. Whereas yeah. they could have easily made them harder, but they just didn't. Like the heroic well, strat for for the the panda monks, right, is just to make them all go to desperate misery at the same time, and you abuse the shield and take no damage. I think if they made you cannot you cannot desperate measure more than one at a time because if you desperate measure like the second or third, they would be like amplified and increased difficulty or something like that, or they won't proc or something bad would happen to really make the fight have to go in the dungeon journal like esque way, because really you just zerg them down. It literally is just a zerg. It's yeah. an AoE Zerg, and you just time the push twice, and you, you win. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I think Shaman's it, and Nazgrim were a mistake. I think those those fights were meant to yeah. be harder. Yeah, I mean, the second boss is kind of like whatever in the end. But it's true, yeah. those seventh and eighth are just like, really? Yeah, but I, feel, I don't think I, that they anticipated the spread the, spread the Shaman strat. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of value in having, say, like maybe four to five easy bosses at the start because sure. you allow some guilds to sort of, you know, farm some some gear, you know, feel good about killing some heroic bosses before they sort of get into the, the harder stuff. But yeah. I think eight bosses in a 14 boss instance is a bit too much um, at this point. Yeah. And then to go then to, to jump into the deeper one, I think the other thing that was a pitfall was the Dark Shaman, whereas I don't. Uh, what Anna just said, I really don't think Blizzard planned the 150 yards spread apart in the giant Valley of Strength, whereas that's mm-hmm. it's cool that we have that huge area to fight them in, and that their mechanics kind of adhere to needing room, but you ignore pretty much the hard part of the fight by they just... They could have cut it off. Like, yeah, they well, they just made like a invisible a, wall or something. Or, well, yeah. they could have made a tether too, where if you spread them out too far, they both get yeah, like, you know, 80% cast speed and 100% attack speed or whatever. Something to make them not you know, slinky apart like that, but Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What can you... you do? I mean, it's not like a bug strat. I mean, you still have to deal with all the mechanics. Oh, of course. So it's not like I, I, I would. They would have fixed it already if they wanted yeah. to, and I don't think they, they, they absolute. I don't think they would have wanted to fix it, but it does make the fight a lot easier than intended. Uh, I don't know what happened with Nazgrim. I, I think Nazgrim just he should have been harder just across the board. So. Yeah, I just wonder what. I just wonder what they what they had in mind for that fight though, because I would love to see a kill video for like Dark Shaman where you actually kept them together. That yeah. would probably be hilarious. Yeah. Somebody should do that. Yeah, is there any are there any out there that now that chat knows about that there actually is no, a kill video yet. where they're you know butt buddied the whole time? I I don't think that's a thing. So, and then Nazgrim is just it's a controlled. It's just a it just sucks like. They probably put a lot of time in these bosses, and then just like they just overlook one thing always, and then yeah, it just completely negates everything. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a problem, really, IMO, because we have so long to sit in this raid instance. This is the nine month or the the twelve month patch, basically. If you look back at previous expansions and how long we can expect to wait for more raid content. Um, and that's why I know we have six fights left, and, and those six fights are really epic. And, you know, yeah. I don't know how long they're going to take my guild. I'm just a 12-hour-a-week raider, unlike you guys. Um, so I like to spend a lot of time on, on my reading and to know I'll be interested for a while. I don't really want to spend six months just sort of doing nothing. Um, but I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we're in an interesting spot right now where, where we got BlizzCon just a little over a month away now. And if they drop a release date for the Dark Blow or whatever it's going to be called, and mm-hmm. it's, like, summer... That's going to be a lot of lull. If we have to sit in this instance for, you know, five to six months after it's on farm, it's going to be rough. They definitely have to have a 5.5 in mind if they do that. If they do a spring release, though, it'll probably be okay. It's like four mm-hmm. months of overlay. But yeah, once we'll you- see. I wouldn't hold your breath, though, so, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> it's the first time they'd ever release out of the fall, which would be really weird for Blizzard. But Blizzard's also been, like, ramping up that, give them content, just give it to them, for a long time now, for this whole expansion, which is crazy. But yeah, we'll yeah. See. we shall see. So then, I I guess then. Um, where did um where did you guys really snag in siege? Where were the biggest cock blocks you guys had in progression? 
for lack of a better term? I guess it kind of started at Melkarok. I mean, Snags is, uh, I mean, it took more than one night, I guess, of raiding to kill each of those those bosses from Melkarok onwards. So I guess you could call that, that a snag. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest snag was obviously Siege Crafter. He took quite a few pulls, like, uh, you know, multiple nights of raiding. That's really the first boss in this instance where we've taken multiple nights to get a boss down other than, I guess, Paragons now. So... Yeah, um, it really all starts at, at Melkarok. That's that's where things start to get really tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Siege I've Crafter the, was amazing. Like, I've heard the difficulty of Siege yeah. Crafter compared to Heroic Leishen. Do you guys think that's accurate? Mm, I, that's I a, don't know, but I think it's really strat dependent, like Leishen. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if you have a if you have a terrible strat, you're not gonna have a good time. My my sense with Siege Crafter is that he's more um, can be lowered in difficulty with gear than Lei Shen. Um, mm -hmm. Like a lot of the the early kills are predicated on how many people you send to do the belts, um, as well as you know your boss DPS and you know which weapons you bring out that sort of thing. And all that sort of is not trivialized, but made a lot easier if you can bring an extra healer or have an extra DPS in the floor, that kind of thing. So as more guilds get more gear, I think the strats that are available to them will sort of change and they'll be able to do some uh, easier combos, that sort of thing. Um, so it probably won't necessarily be a Lei Shen type difficulty eventually. Um, I think a good example, if you think back to tier 15, was uh, like Duramu was an incredibly tight DPS check the first week and then you know, guilds were 30, 40 seconds ahead the next week, and it became one of the easier bosses in the instance. So I think Siegecrafter might fall prey to that, uh, given a few more months in the instance. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that makes sense. I'm glad to hear you guys say that it's a fun, hard fight. I mean, sometimes we have these, like, really nasty fights, and, and they just suck to work on. So I, I thought Siegecrafter was really fun um, when I did him on normal, and yeah. I look forward to doing him on Haruk then. The, the Manted, yeah, no. Not yeah, the Manted, not so much. Not so <laughs> much. <laughs> No belts or anything fun, so. Huh. Well, if someone could translate this real quick, we have the first time we've ever, I guess we do breaking news on Final Boss. This just went up um, from BB, not even, not just over 10 minutes ago now, I guess. Garrosh is dead. At least the 10-man heroic version of him on the world stage has been defeated by an Asian guild. I mm -hmm. don't know how to translate this. If anyone can translate what their guild name is. Wait, it's a 10-man? 10-man. Yeah. yeah, that Ten happened last night. Yeah. yeah, that yeah, happened yeah, last yeah. night. I remember. I remember seeing yeah. that. The thing is, but, though, with the Asians, their ten man is the same difficulty as Euro and West, but they have they still have more gear. They have more gear because their eye levels are higher. Yeah, the group has five seventy three plus eye level because of the eye level ramp that, that the Asian scene has. And I think we have talked about it a little bit here on Final Boss. How I've always kind of weirdly quantified the heroic scene for the world stage to have the you have the West and then you have the Asian market because the asian game is just different they have more they have more lockouts they have higher eye level gear like it's a different game i don't know if it can be easily said it's on the same level as blowage and method because it's just a, it's a different game but it, it's yeah. so that's the first kill technically that is the first kill for whatever that's worth um yeah. Well, I mean, I think what it tells you at least is that the fight isn't bugged. It doesn't have any sort of debilitating True. bug that prevents you from killing it. So, True. you know, it just may take a little bit of gear or dropping healers, that, that kind of thing. So I think that's good news, actually. Yeah, because yeah. if, if there wasn't a kill for a long time, you'd wonder if, like, phase four or phase five, I guess, phase four, five, whatever, the, the heroic only phase would be, like, weird and have bugs or the debuffs or whatever wouldn't work. Yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. that's confirmed that it's not Sinestra. Um <clears throat> Speaking of bugs, uh, we actually didn't get into this before, and I think it was a little earlier on oh. the show plans. Yeah. I was wondering if you guys uh, could talk a little about any any bugs that really stopped your progression, since I know the Cutting Edge Guilds tend to be the ones who, who really see these. Uh, were there any? I mean, I know there usually are some as we move into a new tier. Um, what comes to, there is a couple of things that were hot fixed along the way, um, but like what comes to mind is right now uh, working on Paragons, like occasionally we've had a case where one hasn't come down, he's just sat up there evading the whole time, which is just oh, a completely God. wasted uh, attempt. Yeah. Oh. So. He's just that, chilling, watching the fight. That would be yep. bad. Having a good Sitting time. Back, yep. Yeah. That would be bad. <laughs> yeah, Charles, I hear Paragons is pretty buggy. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever heard that oh, joke before. You're oh, there. God. <laughs> Get that Number one joke, US. Trending on Twitter. They Jeez. are manted, not bugs. 
Oh, God. Spazzo come out with the yeah. Spazzo was like the relative lore nerd here outside of myself. He, I guess that would be a big thing. <laughs> yeah. But are, are are Mantid really not bugs? Aren't they? What, what's their what's their genos classification there, Spazzo? What, what do you I think? I don't know to be honest, but <laughs> technical terms are Mantid, so I just want the pun to stop. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I guess you'd have to like to to Wowpedia. <laughs> and I hate them because we had to do all those damn quests um, at the launch of the expansion. They're my yeah. least favorite. I'm, they're the only faction that I'm really, really happy to fight. Really happy to fight because the the most angry I've ever been at this game was uh, having to do that, get, having to get to exalted with the Claxi after I was so burned out from doing all of the rest of my raid prep. I was so angry at the damn faction. <laughs> <laughs> so so those, angry. Those poor Claxi. I know. I hate them. Like uh, I guess you get to you get to kill two daily hubs in this raid. So you know if you hate yeah. dailies, this is the raid for you. That is true. Yeah, this content patch did kill two daily hubs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is. I that, I didn't realize that we kill our yeah. uh, golden lotus friends. Well, mm -hmm. we don't. Aren't they already dead? The the quest givers are the ones who are dead. Oh, and we kill in the instance. And in the instance we kill yeah. their friends or other people in the golden lotus but the actual quest givers are featured in the fight as like the bodies floating around on the top uh, okay. yeah oh, it's it's really? one of the That's two amazing. because yeah. like rook rook is the guy that would give you like one of the early quests he's the one that was always on his knees like he's like meditating there but then mm -hmm. i guess yeah the other people that gave you the quests are the um the, it's the models because they're called you know misery and sorrow whatever i yeah, guess those are those the guys. people yeah but mm -hmm. all those npcs died because they're at the epicenter of the explosion so mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's real. And that's ground that zero. Sad. That mm -hmm. ground sad. It's pretty cool, though, because this is probably one of the only raids. I mean, this is like a subtopic I put on here if we had time. I don't want to take too much time out because I know you guys raid tonight. But this is the first raid we've had that is like really world changing. I know we had the Cataclysm and Deathwing changed the world, right? But his raid is totally, you know, offset. And I guess in the, in the, in the, 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 the five man, you get to see like the future version of it. But this is, like, mm -hmm. literally, like, this is, like, in-game, not expansion-based, but, like, in the flow of the game, like, changes. It changes the entire yeah, like you, landscape. Uh, you know yeah. the lake by uh, where you kill Mr. Smite? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. I used to hang on that lake all the time, and now it's all gone. That's oh. all, yeah. It's a black cesspool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is he still spawned there, though? The first yeah, he maker? still spawns, Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so no it's... more shiny lake. No more yeah. shiny leg. <laughs> and a lot of us don't remember this because it was so long ago, but you had to do like a pretty long quest chain even to just open up the middle of the zone. I mean, that just getting yep. access to that area yeah, the, was the really epic. Yeah, the fire thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Yeah, it was I, a big deal. When I made my, my, my first ult, really, for Mop, I, I didn't know how to get into the valley. And again, I was like, how do you get... Do I oh, did someone just give you a lift? <laughs> yeah, I got a portal. I got a portal. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do it. Uh, yeah, I do, on my alt, I just have people give me a lift over the wall. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think Blizzard in the past has sort of been a little bit apprehensive about doing world changing because they kind of want that content they made to sort of remain for other people to see later. But I think they're realizing just how disposable their content is, so you may sure. as well make it sort of an ec epic experience for yeah. The I was people surprised while they how much they it. changed. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that's what they were going for. Mm -hmm. I think they're also experimenting with like time limited content, and that's something that I think is really cool about playing an MMO. Like if you have the Horde Breaker title, you know that person participated in those quests that were only there for one content patch. Yeah, and that's something um, you know people are if they haven't complained about it, they're going to, and they they absolutely have complained about it with reference to the Wolf off of Garrosh. That if you don't kill him. Um, if you don't kill him when he's current, you're, you're never going to get access to that mount again. And people screamed about it, but it's, it's like time limited. You only have access for a short amount of time. And we can think of like the old, um, the old veil as being that kind of time limited content. Like we yep. only saw it because we played during the year that, that it was there. So. And that, that is a business move because they want to reward people that are playing their game constantly. And it's also, it helps the, the, the fullness of the game. I know it, mm -hmm. drink, in Star Wars Old Republic, yeah. they do this stuff. There you go. They do this. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> in Star they Wars do Old this, Republic. They do this all the time. Right now, they have weekly events where if you play every week, you get different bounty contracts. And they're different all the time. Like, they're really engaging. But if you don't play, you just miss out on all the previous ones. They don't exist anymore. They also had the Gree event, which is like a week-long thing. They've had it twice now. Whereas if you're not playing during that time, you just don't get to see it. But it rewards all the players that are playing currently to actually see this new content and see this, like, you know, this evolving thing. 
And there goes Spazzo. Um, no, <laughs> getting his drink ready. So I think that's... It's fine, I think, in, in MMOs to do this kind of stuff. I just think that WoW has such a, the biggest population that once you get that huge demographic, you have more people that don't like it. Whereas the smaller games that do this stuff all the time, like with, you know, even with, with Rift, and I think Guild Wars 2 does all like the live kind of changing things, they they don't have much like war cry because they have less player base, but the player base that, that plays it is, enjoys it. So Well, it's also the way like it's taught too. Like, I mean, if you do something forever, like people aren't always going to be like, oh, why don't you change this? Like, mm -hmm. if they had done this with, like, the Ragmount stuff, like, if when Dragon Soul came out, you couldn't get the Ragmount at all, like, you know, things would have been different. I think so, yeah. And, like, but... Invincible, same thing. Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, Invincible was the last patch, but still. Yeah, but you can still get it. That's the point now, is that they're going yeah. forward with, with like, not... If you couldn't get it at all, like... Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Are there any mounts? The only mount in the game outside of the current one that I think you can't get anymore is the Trial of the Grand Crusader 50 attempt perfect kill one, right? Like, I have the Swift War Steed. You can't get that anymore, right? Like, I have Can the... Can you get it if you go in with a full raid of people at the appropriate level, or is it just not in the game at all? I don't think it exists. Not in... Oh. Yeah, they, cool. they removed... When they added the hard mode uh, toggle to uh, yeah. the game, you couldn't do that for the 50 attempt thing anymore, so it's effectively mm -hmm. gone, unfortunately. Yeah. Chat brings up that next uh, that the next mounts are gone as well, yep. and and all the AQ stuff was also oh, that yeah, was the AQ, really cool. Yeah, that was a time event. I don't know how I forgot about that, but yeah. Well, like you talk about the gong mount from vanilla, like the the the, the, the black scarab mount, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like well, that was like huge prestigious level because yeah. only only yeah. technically like a handful of people in the game ever got that mount. Yeah, but I guess that that's outside of the raiding scene. I guess they opened the raid with it. But yeah, but I think. I honestly miss those kind of things because the opening of the gates of AQ was like awesome. I don't think it ever had anything that big of a scale since because yeah. that took a long time. Coming coming from a realm like Sargeras though, like when this patch launched, like the lag was unbearable. I can't oh, imagine yeah. if we had another event like that, like our server would just die. Like I think they need to up their technology really before they try and do something on that scale again. I mean, we know because we saw it on Undasta. Um, Undasta crashed all kinds of servers, and that's because everyone showed up. If there was an event, I mean, even more than a world loss, oh, yeah. the servers would just crash and burn, crash and burn. Mm hmm. Yeah, the original ZA bear mount, the red one, not the stupid purple pink oh, yeah. one. Yeah, I have a, I have a red one. We were selling those. I never got a red one, so I have yeah. a washed up pink one. Oh, the washed up pink one. No. See, that's why I yeah. really it's like the Garrosh cool. mount. It's the Garrosh mount makes me really happy. I also yeah. really like wolves, and as I guess alliance, three of us here yeah. are alliance players, and mm -hmm. we don't have we don't have access. Actually, um, it makes me really happy that you guys are still Alliance. You guys are, like, waving the flag for Alliance. <laughs> yeah, mid we didn't talk about that at all. That's a good point, though. Midwinter is, like, one of the only top Alliance guilds. A lot of the other ones are all Horde. Riding that yeah, bandwagon. There's, there's that us, hype train. Scrub, Scrubbusters. Scrubs. And there's, like, I think there's, like, three Russian Alliance guilds in the top 20. Mm -hmm. yeah. Three or two. But, yeah, mm. that's it. There was uh, there was a poll before the start of the expansion um, when we because we used to be on Yasera we were gonna switch servers we knew that much but then there's a poll about you know should we go Horde and as a whole the guild wanted to stay Alliance so that's something that's kind of stuck and that's one of those guild decisions where you know it may hurt progression a little bit sometimes but it's you yeah. know what the guild wants so we're gonna stick Alliance for at least the foreseeable future. Well, they say that the biggest problem with the whole Alliance Horde thing, it's not necessarily like the tiny little percent from the, the Beast Slaying, although that, that makes a difference at y'all's level. Um, but it's also recruiting, and I have to imagine that you guys don't have that much trouble recruiting with where you are. Um, it's it's the people who are kind of lower in, guilt, yeah. lower in the spectrum who, who need to work a whole lot harder to attract applicants um, than when you're trying to attract them from a, from a raiding world that's 75% Horde. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but I have to yeah. imagine that Midwinter gets a lot of attention considering how well you guys are doing this tier. So, yeah, like when I go open alliance, my real ID, yeah. it's like all grayed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't play with any of your friends. They're all freaking whore. <laughs> yeah, big bummer. Uh, yep. Yeah. No, I. But totally I love that you guys are alliance, and I love that you stayed that way because the the people mm -hmm. in the guild wanted to play that way. So I like it. Yeah, I I think that's gonna be a thing that might change in the in the expansion too because Blizzard. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say scumbagged out the whole guild transfer thing to go to Horde because of like the slight advantage Horde racials have on the high end progression scene, right? Mm -hmm. but, yeah, they didn't, um, like, in terms of like how much they actually make, they really didn't make that much. Right, yeah, yeah. but I always yeah. still think it's weird. I think they might, they might, because they talked about fixing talents, I mean, not talents, but passives and, and racials for MOP, but they didn't really do it. 
So I wonder if that might I think change. Next expansion they will. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to leave th the active ones on Horde. That, mm. I don't think they're going to. Probably I have, I have faith. The, I think <laughs> the only issue is is that like it's uh, racials are something that I think a lot of say more casual players identify with as their characters. So like you take something away from them and it's like they lose part of their character identity because you know and that's yeah. important to a lot of those type of people. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah, that is really important. You can't screw with that kind of stuff without making it into a really big deal, which I guess is why we didn't see any changes. Yeah. Um, that in within this expansion. Um, I'm just hoping that it, that an expansion release presents the right kind of time for that those kinds of changes to happen. Yeah, and I'm wondering about that too because they, they've that's a huge pivotal point. So is like the character models. We all want the new character models, but mm -hmm. it is a good point. I don't know if GC said it or Zarheim said it. One of the top um, blue posters that do a lot, of, probably GC, but he said that that no MMO in history has ever mm -hmm. in the same game remade their character models without lots of problems like eq to eq2 like obviously a different game did update everything that's that's fine but like mm -hmm. if we get new character models and new racials those are huge pivotal things that that definitely would be groundbreaking for blizzard to do because no other mmo has done that uh, racials not as much but the character models yes but they were the first mmo that really like the cataclysm was huge they broke the world they changed their entire original vanilla launch game so if they could do that then i have faith i believe mm -hmm. yeah it should be good it should be good so, to get kind of close to the end of the normal episode proper here, we don't have any real good ones to bring up in the show right now. So if you do have questions for us, definitely stick around for the after show. We'll talk a little bit and take live questions from either Twitter or from the chat, and you can talk to uh, Ryath and Spazzo or myself and Anna directly. But if you do have questions for upcoming episodes or just have like blind questions you want to ask towards a class... Definitely send them over to finalboss.tv and go to the submit a question, uh, ask a boss section. We do have the email working now. You can do that. And also, if you have a, uh, you yourself or you have someone you want to promote this to, to uh, come on the show as a guest boss, you can submit to be a guest as well. We check those out. And if your question isn't um, geared toward the show coming up, we always save good ones and keep them around for future shows. But for mm -hmm. tonight, right now, and because of the uh, just the way that the spread is going, we haven't been able to get the guest bosses that are coming up on the next week's show out right now because of the progression scene. Like, I can't tell you who's coming on the show next week right now because we haven't locked them in yet. Um, I'm not going to even tease about it because I don't want to, like, be wrong and it, you know, comes back around and bites me in the ass. So, when that happens, though, definitely check our Twitter and our Facebook for everything like that because then we'll know what's happening beforehand and you can submit questions all the time. Just submit them whenever you want. Like, if you have a question for, for Riggs in the future, like, just submit it to him or Sloot or, or Sko or whoever or a Warlock or Hunter question. Just go to FinalBoss.tv Submit your question. We'll keep them around if they're good ones, and we'll use them on the shows in the future. But for now, I think we are about done here. Hit that play button real quick here. And, uh, and yeah. You guys have been awesome. I'm Adam K, a.k.a. Bay. I'm over at twitch.tv, Bay TLM. Tw uh, Twitch makes it look like Bay Tim. People call me Bay Tim all the time, but it's... It, it's oh, why did that volume just go up on me? Come on now, VLC. <laughs> You're crazy now. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Join me also, my lovely co-host of Final Boss TV, NFL. Nice to see all you guys tonight. Thanks for coming and hanging out on the show. Always Twitter, love seeing everyone. Oh, Twitter at NFL. Mm -hmm. Super easy. She's very prolific on the Twitters, too. <laughs> all the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Warning, it's not all related to WoW, but, you know. Yep. Yeah. That's not a big deal. Also, Spazzo Midwinter. Thank you for being on the show with us tonight, sir. Thank you. Thank Twitter. You. Hopefully, some, hopefully some Mantid died tonight. Ah, yeah, that would yeah, be good. Yeah, we're cheering for you. Yeah, definitely. But Twitter at Spazzo, not hard either. Go check him out. Go follow the Midwinter race. And also, Ryeth, the handsome shaman brother in arms. He's really far away right now. Where did you go? <laughs> uh, I'm leaning back. I've been leaning forward all show, so yeah. I need to, to kick back a little bit before it raids. But yeah, thanks for having me. It's been fun. Mm -hmm. be, uh, I'm glad to come back again sometime once uh, once this progression thing dies down a little bit. Yeah. Just uh, because they've been on the show once doesn't mean they won't come back on the show in the future. But Twitter, Ryeth underscore MW for his Twitter. And for everyone here at the uh, Final Boss crew... Follow Mobs and Minions. You guys are awesome. If you have questions, stick around for the after show. And if you missed this episode or want to share it around, it'll be on YouTube tomorrow and then iTunes very shortly after. It's at the same time. And, uh, yeah. Have a great week. Rating on the reset, guys. And every Sunday we are here at 4 p.m. Eastern. 
one PST and uh, 10 CET if I'm not probably wrong on my time zones. But yeah, you guys are awesome. We'll see you later. And uh, I'll switch it over here so you guys can wave by. We'll see you for the after show in a little bit. Have a good week. Peace. See you, guys. See you next Sunday. Thanks for coming. Yeah.